work performed by our members each and every day. These clips begin with some information from David Letterman about sliding down poles. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is tonight's top ten list. Let's start. Uh... The uh, category tonight, listen carefully, top ten fun things to yell or scream while sliding down a fire pole. Uh -huh. Top ten things that are fun to yell while sliding down a fire pole. And helping tonight with the presentation of the old top ten list, firefighters from New York Fire Department's Ladder 4, Engine 54. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Number 10, Sam Otis. It's hosing time! Number 9, Chris Reynolds. Bottle infection! <laughs> Number 8, David Turner. Why are we rushing? It's only light of his house. Number seven, Bill Pepinakis. Last one to the fire trucks, gotta clean the Dalmatian. Number six, Ralph Talaricho. I love friction! Number five, James Cooney. Quit playing games with my heart. Number four, Bill Dunnigan. Geraldo! Number three. Andrew Sforzum. Stairs are for cops. Yeah. Number two, Russ Regan. If it wasn't for this, I'd have no sex life at all. Awesome. That's awesome. And the number one fun thing to yell while sliding down a fire pole, here's Bill Wilson. You've got the pole. Few of us ever think of the firefighters like these guys from Ladder 37, Engine 79, who are out here all night waiting for a call at any second to go in and save a life. Here's the story. Another night, another emergency. As most people are celebrating Christmas Eve with their families, there are thousands of dedicated New Yorkers working to help others. At Ladder Company 37, Engine Company 79 here in the Bronx, these New York City firefighters are one big family. Even though it's Christmas Eve, the men say it's all in the family. I can't think of a better bunch of guys to be with on this night. And I'm so glad to be here with these fellas if I can't be with my family. Almost every firehouse in the city has a special Christmas Eve meal tonight. Here, it's seafood with loads of garlic and onions. There's nothing better than firehouse cooking. The medium sauce brand bring the reserved shrimp, shells and chicken broth, bay leaves and pepper to a boil of a medium high heat. But life goes on, and as the dinner simmers, the firefighters have a run. Smoke in a building. Back at home, everyone's hoping for a few minutes to chow down. And everyone working tonight to help us has a Christmas wish. How about a safe year for the boys? Just wish everybody a happy and healthy and a safe Christmas and New Year's. We just wish that the families that were affected by the latest tragedies uh, with the fires uh, can have, have a Merry Christmas and a better New Year. It's a real tough time and uh, I really feel for you. And the one thing we do want to say, without a doubt, we want to thank all of you firefighters and all of the firefighters and police officers in the city of New York. Wish you a very Merry Christmas. I know somebody here must want to say something. I have a feeling maybe the chief. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Merry Christmas to all. Have a safe New Year. How about you, sir? Merry Christmas. It's, it, you know, it's amazing how these guys can go into a burning building and save lives, but you put them on television and they're speechless. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry now back Merry to you. Oh, that's it. One more time. <laughs> Hours old, but already has taken a ride on a fire truck and nearly sent his mother into shock. Letter 113 heard the call and five firefighters scrambled onto the truck. They were not prepared for what they were about to find. The run came in as a baby fell out. We assumed it was baby fell out a window, which happens uh, unfortunately quite often. 
And when we got there, it was baby fell out of the mother. Then when we realized the baby was okay and the mother was okay, it, you know, we all started kind of saying, hey, this is great, we're here, she just had a baby, congratulate, we're congratulating her. And One of the members saw pictures on the wall of her receiving her diplomas from the police academy, and that's when we realized, you know, we were helping one of our, one of our brothers, you know. You're the dad? Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> These are the men who delivered your baby. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. I'm just happy uh, they got there on time. I just want to thank just them for the help. Uh, delivering my baby and helping out. Harbin stood wearing a firefighter's coat outside his damaged apartment building on York and 79th this afternoon. It's all he has. The apartment and everything in it is a total loss. A roommate's unattended candle set off an inferno that gutted his place and the apartment upstairs and left nine of his neighbors homeless because of the smoke and water damage. But Danny is lucky. If not for an unusual rope rescue by the fire department, he and his neighbor would be dead. Yeah, they did save my life. I couldn't breathe, man. I was, I mean, I, I got no, I don't have any burns on me, but I mean, I was coughing a lot. I was really coughing. I was like, you know. These two firefighters are the heroes. Dangling from ropes, they grabbed Danny and his 77-year-old neighbor and rappelled along the sheer side of the building's air shaft to a window on the floor below. You can see the smoke coming up from the air shaft as Chopper 2 flew by the building during the noon hour. It sounds simple enough, but imagine the place is filled with smoke, you can't breathe, and you're in the arms of a firefighter. Nothing between you and a six-story fall, but a rope tethered to the roof. This is definitely a wake-up call. The rope rescue is something firefighters train for, but seldom use. It's dangerous and scary. So in training, you have everybody around you, you got the officers guiding you, you have, you know, people telling you what to do, but when you're up there by yourself and nobody else around you, it's... It's a little scary. How often are rope rescues? How often do they? Um, I don't know. I don't really keep count, but uh, I think it's uh, you know, it's uh, similar to the perfect game in baseball, I would imagine. <laughs> the smoke as we flew by. We are in Hollis. This is 100 Avenue, just off of 195th Street, and you can see this house here fully engulfed in flames. Now, this fire was just reported to the fire department. They literally just rolled up on the scene. This information so fresh, we don't even have an exact address on this. Obviously, the fire is raging out of control. We've seen the fire department literally running around this house trying to get it set up. They haven't even had a chance to get water on it. Again, a house fire burning out of control in Hollis, Queens, 100th Avenue at 195th Street. I don't know if you just saw that on the right side of the screen. The power lines just snapped. This fire is out of control. Rob, I'm just stunned here by the pictures that I'm seeing. You know, if we ever doubted the bravery of the New York City Fire Department, all you have to do is look at this picture. This firefighter is actually trying to get into the attic of this private house, which is absolutely engulfed in flame, as you can see. This fire's been burning out of control now for the last 10 minutes. We got a street address. It is 100-30. 195th Street. We're in the Hollis section of Queens. Right now we have no reported injuries, but fire department units are still just arriving on the scene. They've managed to get into the first floor of this house, but haven't gotten up into the second floor. You can see them. They're going to try and get some water on this via a tower ladder. This is just a spectacular blaze out here. Again, no injuries reported. This is still considered an all-hands. Not yet a second alarm. We're going to stay over the scene and keep an eye on this. Just amazing bravery being uh, displayed here by the New York City Fire Department. Look at these pictures. Thank you.